Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It is time to check out the new Mac Studio, which is fairly heavy actually in this box. Of course, I got the one with the new M1 Ultra chip, so it can run some tests on that. I also wanna make note, I did just unbox the studio display from Apple, so we'll get it connected to this monitor. If you do wanna check out my unboxing on that, I can link to it down below. And also, of course, have an upcoming video on the new iPhone SE, so be sure to subscribe so you're notified when that goes live. But anyways, let's check out the brand new design Mac Studio from Apple, see what comes in the box, get it all set up and test it out. Let's get started. Here is the Mac Studio box. It does have a handle up towards the top. Just a quick look showing off what it's going to look like, Apple logo. Box does have a little bit of weight to it and a sneak preview of the back. And also Apple M1 Ultra chip. I hope I don't regret getting the one terabyte SSD. I do have some portable Thunderbolt SSDs that hopefully tied me over. This part slides forward revealing what we have looks like up towards the top is where our booklets are going to be designed by apple in california mac studio getting started guide and information along with one big apple sticker next up sliding this to the side is our mac studio there it is quick look at the dimensions there we're going to set it to the side for just a second because underneath is where that power cable is at just a quick look at the braiding of it. Uh, very, the exact same style of cable that comes with uh, the studio display. So it is uh, pretty uniform if you want to get the Mac Studio and studio display in terms of cables. So that's it in the box, just these three things. I honestly am a little upset it doesn't come with any sort of basic mouse and keyboard. They literally shipped you a computer without a way to use it with the assumption that you have one at the ready. And yes, it's a fair assumption to say that I have a mouse and keyboard to use with this computer. However, just in case it's sort of fail safe, just a way to do basic operations on it. It's, it's to me a little bit of a bummer, especially when you're paying a price like this to not include a keyboard and mouse. Anyways, let's open this on up and I'm, I'll actually grab my uh, magic mouse and keyboard that came with the iMac. But here, let's take a close look at this hardware. A first look at the bottom of the Mac Studio, raised up just a little bit for some more ventilation. Uh, it does have this black ring to give you a little bit more grip. It's not really that grippy. And then this is actually a, a lock to so you can't actually break into the Mac Studio. On the front, yes, the front, there are some ports to USB Type-C and an SD card. And then looks like a status indicator light right there. Nothing along the left and right side. Actually, those are completely empty. But then, obviously, the back, we've got a lot going on, including four USB Type-C ports, Ethernet power, two USB Type-A ports, HDMI, a headphone jack, and there is that small power button on the back. And one thing I want to make note of is, uh, at least when I was watching the presentation, I was kind of confused why the headphone jack's in the back and not the front here. I, I, I think it would make a little bit more sense to just have the headphone jack on the front. And finally, up at the top, a big Apple logo with a little bit of a reflection, uh, kind of a darker tint reflection to it. Anyways, let's grab our power cable and get this machine plugged in. Like I said, I grabbed my keyboard and mouse from the iMac and then there's our power cable. And I will be connecting this to that Mac Studio. I've got it set up right to my left. So let's get it plugged in and check out the Mac Studio. All right, I've got it all set up, plugged into my monitor and plugged into the outlet. Let's press the power button for the first time. It does have a speaker inside, I believe, because the studio made the noise, not the monitor, if I'm not mistaken. So it is booting up for the first time and it looks like it's turning on the studio display, which let's go ahead and talk about a couple things in regards to that. Oh, and also I have to make mention of this. Just, just think about Apple and they created a mouse that you can't really use when it's plugged into a computer. So not only do they not send you a mouse to use to set everything up or a keyboard, but the mouse that Apple sells has this design. 
A couple things before we run through the startup process that I want to mention. I do have the height adjustable stand on the display. And if you have the Mac Studio in this position, putting it to the lowest possible height, you still have a gap between the monitor and your computer. So this is totally a usable uh, position. It doesn't have to be off on the side if you want to use the lowest height for the monitor. Or obviously, there you go. You can just use that and change the height of your monitor. <laughs> So this screen's telling me to turn on the mouse and keyboard, I think because it's registered. Wait, did that work? Actually, it did. Okay. So it looks like I don't have to, I thought I was actually going to have to plug it in. It's at least nice that it recognized it. I just turned it off and turned it back on. Let's see if I can get the keyboard to work by doing the exact same thing. So it's on the hello screen. I just turned the keyboard on and off. Pressing enter doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's click with the mouse though. Okay. So the mouse is working. The mouse is moving. Um, I'll see if I can get the keyboard to connect. So I actually had to end up plugging in the keyboard to get it to work, just something to note. The mouse worked, ended up working fine without plugging it in, but the keyboard I needed to. Nothing crazy through the startup process, pretty standard getting it connected to Wi-Fi. I did have an update to install, so it did install that. And now we are on that home screen. Uh, all set up, ready to go. I'm gonna install a couple apps. We can run a benchmark, maybe do a little video editing. Uh, but here is the power of that M1 Ultra. Let's go ahead and test it. I also want to touch on something that Apple had mentioned in their presentation that they had for the new Mac Studio, and that's in relation to the M1 Ultra versus the RTX 3090 graphics card. I actually have a 3090 in the desktop that I built. I can link to that build video down below. But anyways, the chart that they showed potentially was a little bit misleading and I kind of wanted to clarify it. Taking a look at this chart, you need to look at it through the lens of power consumption. That's what Apple was trying to point out. The reason it can be a little misleading is because it seems like the 3090 tails off their performance. If you look on the left side, it's just relative performance. So it's saying when the 3090 and the M1 Ultra have relative performance, this is the amount of power consumption that they have. Now with that in mind, the 3090 definitely has more power capabilities. The performance of the 3090 is definitely better than the M1 Ultra, but this graph kind of makes it seem like they both tail off at the same re relative performance, but they don't. The RTX 3090 definitely is more powerful, but however, consumes a lot more power than that M1 Ultra. So I think that's the highlight of all of these new chips from Apple is the minimum amount of power consumption because of course the RTX 3090 needs is huge. It's a massive graphics card. It needs a big case to put it in. It needs a lot of ventilation. Whereas you compare it to something the size of the Mac Studio, it's actually pretty insane. So because of the lower power consumption, you can have a smaller PSU and have powerful builds and smaller computers like these, as opposed to the larger gaming builds you'll see with a big RTX 3090 GPU. And also want to make note that the power consumption might be beneficial for someone that's going to buy them in bulk. It might save you a good amount on your electricity if you're buying a lot of them, maybe a bigger business. First, I have Geekbench installed Apple M1 Ultra at 3.19 gigahertz, 64 gigs of memory. Let's run a CPU benchmark. All right, if interested, a 1767 single core score and 23,721 multi-core score. Obviously, you can go ahead and compare that if you'd like to. I know some people requested a Geekbench test, and this is right out of the box without anything uh, really on the computer now. Uh, I actually just installed Final Cut Pro, so let's go into that app. I'm going to put some video files, and actually I have my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip inside. So I'm going to run and render the same exact video edit within Final Cut Pro. It's going to be very basic, but then compare the time um, and just time the, the renders from both of them. All right, so for a basic test, this is Final Cut Pro on the Mac Studio. I On my MacBook Pro, I have the exact same project loaded into the timeline. Very simple, about seven minutes worth of 4K video clips. Uh, really nothing crazy about the editing. I'm really just testing out 
uh, just the the speeds to actually compile a video. So we'll we'll see the comparison. I'm actually kind of excited to really test it. Now, if you're curious, this will be in 4K H.264 uh, video codec. If you're wondering, and let's get our stopwatch going. I'm gonna hit start and then quickly hit save on the laptop and the Mac Studio at the same time. So here we go. Start, click on both of them. There they go. So now they're both rendering. Also want to make note, this is very just a blanket test. Uh, my, my laptop has a ton of files on it, so this isn't going to be a true clean build on both computers tests. It's just a quick comparison to see how the compiling goes between these two machines, one having the M1 Ultra, one having the M1 Max. So it's been about two minutes, actually some interesting results so far. They seem about the exact same speed, which I personally was not expecting. They're both at about 83%. Um, so I'm expecting them to finish at just about the same time. Not exactly sure why, maybe just, you know, because it's such a simple uh, run through, it doesn't really need to pull too much power to render this, uh, I'll have to really think about this. There we go, actually, the M1 Max beat the M1 Ultra in about, uh, I should have stopped it, in about 235 for this seven minute 4K video file. So I guess potentially if you're doing just basic video editing, clearly the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max are very comparable. Now I can imagine in other programs you're going to get better performance out of the M1 Ultra. This, again, is just a very blanket test using Final Cut Pro. However, some interesting results. If you have some thoughts on the uh, end result of these, if you happen to have a reason, my guess is just because it was so simple, it doesn't need to render through, or maybe the program just limits that rendering. Uh, a little confusing, I guess. I would expect if it had more power because when I compared the original M1 chip with the M1 Ultra, there was a clear difference in rendering time. So not 100% sure why this didn't improve the time to actually compile that video. I'll ask around, see if someone has other results, maybe do a little bit more testing, and I'll drop a comment down below with my findings. But anyways, that's everything I wanted to talk about for now with the M one ultra chip and the new Mac studio with an updated design. Pretty cool how much power they can pack into such a small machine. It looks good in my opinion. Doesn't take up a lot of space. It does have some weight, but does that really matter when it just sits on a de desk anyways? Anyways, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe. A lot more content coming soon. And as always, thanks for watching.